uh, welcome you and indicate that we have got uh, some guests from the Office of the Auditor General who are going to brief us about uh, the uh, material irregularities of uh, uh, the department as we are expected to report as we have done already to the National Assembly on all material irregularities at the national level, provincial, as well as at local level. And uh, so that's the briefing. Uh, but before I uh, hand over to them, can we get apologies? Uh, Portfolio Committee Secretary. Good morning, everybody. Yes, Chairperson, we received an apology from Honorable Tireko. Um, she's on study leave still. That's the only apology we, we received. And then we do for a quorum for this meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, as, as already indicated, uh, we, besides uh, having our new minister from the box and uh, any other uh, political leadership that might be part of the session and uh, guests who might as well be part of the session, you are all welcome. And uh, our guest today is a uh, uh, a delegation from the Office of uh, the Auditor General's Office, led by uh, Ms. Nombaka Matanzim, who is the uh, leader of the team. Uh, I will, uh, because the item is just that briefing, I will immediately hand over to her she might as well uh, 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 introduce the team and immediately get into uh, business. Uh, I'm sure uh, we'll allow the minister after this presentation when we start engaging. Uh, Ms. Matanzima, over to you. Um. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Honorable Chair. Uh, good morning, Honorable Members, uh, Honorable Minister, uh, the Department uh, who are in attendance, and also my fellow colleagues. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Minister, Honorable Chair, and the members for affording uh, us this opportunity to, to brief the committee on the status of the material irregularities that were issued uh, to the Department of Corporate Governance and, and Traditional Affairs. Uh, with your permission, Honorable Chair, I would like firstly to, to introduce my team. Um, I am Nompakamu Matanzima, I'll start with myself, who is the business unit leader that oversees the, the, the audit of the Department of Corporate Governance and Traditional Affairs and all its entities. And with me today, I've got um, my Deputy Business Unit Leader, Nicholas Mugwena, and I also have my acting audit senior manager, Mdumiseni Dazela, who will be the one who's gonna take us through the detailed presentation. I also have Mobile Mlanga, who's the audit manager. But before Honorable Chair, uh, I just want to highlight to the committee that as the Auditor General, we have adopted our culture shift strategy. And which, is, which has got a high aspirations to shift a, a quantum of our audits to a culture that is characterized by accountability, uh, transparency, integrity, and also a culture of performance. So we want to see a culture, to shift from a culture of inaction to a culture of action. So one of our strategic goals in that culture shift strategy is enforcement. So as, the, as you all know that the, the public audit amended has accorded the extended powers 
to do more, not just to report, but also to enforce the remedial actions. And therefore the material irregularity process is one of the levers that we use to enforce this accountability in the public sector, thereby exercising our extended powers. So we have um, issued in the previous briefing in, during the BRRR process, we have presented to you these material irregularities and then which were are mostly on the community works program and also one pertaining to the municipal infrastructure grant. And I'll now hand over to you because the committee true. Firstly, the MI process, we call it material irregularity process, and uh, afterwards the detailed of those material irregularities and its status. And also our call for action um, of which our oversight, the oversight structure as yourselves can do to expedite the closure of these material irregularities. For your, with your permission, Honorable Chair, I'll now hand over to Mdumiseni Dazela to take uh, the committee to the detailed presentations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can I go forward, Chair? Yes, proceed. No, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, Chair, I'll start with just reciting our mission as the Office of the Auditor General that the Auditor General of South Africa has a constitutional mandate and as a supreme audit institution of South Africa, we exist to strengthen our country's democracy by enabling oversight, accountability, and governance in the public sector through auditing, thereby building public confidence, public confidence. Our vision is to be recognized by all our stakeholders as the supreme audit institution that enhances public sector accountability. Um, I'll move to slide number three, Chair. In, okay. Slide number three, Chair, what you're seeing here is the AG. So I just want to see. Is, well, what we're saying here is the AG is that we, we've had an appreciation that for, for, for us to, to, to have an impact, a right, desired impact, let's first take stock on all the important stakeholders that matter in the ecosystem. So what you see then in that drawing is us trying to highlight the important stakeholders that we get support from. We, we're trying to highlight the important stakeholders that we believe if we can work with those stakeholders, we can do more to change the trajectory of financial management in our country. At a very high level, you'll observe maybe, if you start from your left, that you have your, what you call your executive team in any organization, your management, senior management, your board, your the internal audit and that. And then on the far right, you have your, your parliament, your oversight, your intervention support group, your, conflict, your, your coordinating ministries and that. And then in the center here, you then have the, 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 the office of the auditor general. What we're seeing as, as Nombagam has noted, we will we provide insights, insights that assist uh, the stakeholders to understand the problems better. What we aim to do is to influence the actions um, of management and, and the oversight committees to say, the, in making sure that the, the, the right solutions are implemented. And as Nombagam has noted, especially in this context of the MIs, to say, where required, there the should be enforcement. We then have got citizens where we're saying, if the whole system operates as it should be, then the beneficiary are the citizens who will um, have improved experience uh, for, from government and the, and the services. So that's what we're trying to draw the picture on number four. On number five, Chair, um, on, from number four, I'll just speak at a very high level on the what we call the material irregularity process. Uh, we, for, for the COCTA portfolio, we had implemented on three auditees. Uh, Department of Corporate Governance, uh, the CRL Commission, 
and the municipal demarcation board. Uh, though those are the three entities that we have implemented, as you understand that Mambaramo noted that the implementation was on a phased approach. Uh, maybe let me start just by defining what is an MI. Uh, an MI means any non-compliance or contravention of legislation, non-compliance or contravention of legislation, fraud, theft, or breach of fiduciary, which is identified during the audit performed under the audit perform, audit, the Public Audit Act, that resulted in, or likely to result in a material financial loss or misuse or loss of a material public resource or substantial harm to the public sector. I think it's important for me to note the definition because as we go through the MIs themselves, we'll be using some of the words that it was non-compliance, it was fraud, it resulted in loss in that. On the right here, Chair, we're saying here, once um, as the AG we've identified the MIs and we've made an assessment that the accounting officer has not implemented appropriate actions to remedy the, the, the situation or the non-compliance, we then have expanded mandate for us to, 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 to action, where, which involves referring the material guilties to the public bodies for further investigation. It could be the Hawks, uh, it could be the public protector, and, and just as an example, we can recommend actions to resolve in the audit report. Uh, we can propose binding remedial action for failure to implement our, our recommendations and we can issue a, certi a certificate of debt if the remedial action is, is not being implemented properly. That just gives you the definition part. Um, in this slide chair, we're trying to source maybe point activities that different oversight committees or different stakeholders, let me use the stakeholders, can or should be doing to support the process. I'll start in number one. Number one, this is when we've just identified the MI and we're saying the accounting authority uh, should implement the actions as is communicated in the MI or ensure that controls are improved to, 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 to stop the loss. I mean, we would understand that if we've noted that there's a leakage, let me use that word, then management needs to implement controls first to ensure that the leakage doesn't happen going forward. They also need to continue to implement now the remedial action of what happened in the past. So I think number one, that's what we're saying, is the AG will then review that in the next accounting side. What's important then is your role here, Chair, the oversight board to say, you then need to have mechanism how you then monitor the progress and support the accounting office or accounting authority in the remedial actions they've implemented to address the MI. So that, that's really the first part. I think the first, second part is an example when we have referred this to public bodies, could be the info investigations, further investigations, it could be the Hawks, it could be the public protector, any other relevant uh, body we've identified as the AG. So again, the responsibilities there is for the, the, the executive team uh, to, to cooperate with the, to cooperate with the investigating board. Uh, then for ourselves as the AG, we need to provide information that we relied on to get to the conclusion. We also cooperate. Uh, we're saying, oversight and the executive committee should support the public body, which is the investigating board in ensuring that the, all the relevant information is shared and the investigation proceeds. And the oversight body will be to monitor the investigation and call the public body to account if there may be instances of undue delays. Uh, number three, when we had recommendations in the audit report, it's for management to implement that. Uh, we follow up based on the recommendation, and I think the oversight board as well 
you should request the action plan for management and monitor that accordingly. Remedial action issued. Um, the accounting officer implements the, the remedial action as stipulated in the audit report. We follow up as the AG and the executive committee needs to also ensure that the, the proposed actions as registered in the audit report are implemented accordingly. That's, that's the process then she had a very high level that maybe we'll speak to. I think as we get to the MIs, you'll understand where maybe the organization is at. I'll get now to, to the actual body of the MIs. Um, on slide number eight, we, we're drawing a very high level summary of the MIs we've identified since implementation. We're saying on the left, there are four MIs that we have identified within COCTA. So of the four MIs, there's one that's factual, uh, where there was an incorrect transfer of money to a supplier, it was supposed to go to a municipality, did not go to a, municipal, to a municipality. So that's one MI we've identified. I think the money that was involved, there was 103, uh, but the department has since recovered 4.7. So the department still needs to follow the process through to recover the 98. I'll get to the detail of that, but just, just at a very high level that we've got the factual one, that's 103 that relates to the, municipal infrastructure grant. Then the other three relates to the community works program. A very high level summary of what were the issues in those three is that the department, when they started to implement the, the process, they would make advances to the implementing agents. Let's say put pay money for them to cover goods and the operations of their project. And we then identified through the audit process that in some cases, the money was paid, but it was never reconciled to confirm that the department has received goods and services for those advances. Uh, that's that. There were cases where we they paid salaries. And then when we did our own testing, we had an appreciation that some of these people have either passed away and we could not get confirmation then that at least when they were still alive, they had worked on the program. So, but I'll get to the details. So the 20 million covers the ones that lead to the CWP. Uh, on the right here, yeah, just the highlights to say, the 4.7 is what was recovered from the 1.3. In total, what needs still to be recovered is estimated. Let me use the word estimated to 118 because there's a factual 98 then the 20 million management can either still confirm a few incorrect exceptions, but it's an estimate for now. So that's what we're using to track with management, at least to get to a point to say what has been recovered or not. Uh, on the internal controls, Chair, we're saying we're happy. Uh, based on the example that I made to say, when a loss happens, it means that the, there was a leakage in the system, if I could put it that way. So the, the first thing is obviously to make sure that that control that did not exist is reinforced. I think that's what we're trying to say. If you look at the incorrect transfers, I think management is, has made the point that the banking system and everything there, the controls are reinforced. So that has never happened since 2019. When we look at the, the payments, uh, the advances that are made to the CWP, the implementing agents, as, as an example, again, management has been able to say, maybe instead of us paying you money and expecting you to give us invoice, maybe what you should do beforehand is to give us a confirmation, whether it's a performer invoice or a quote that you actually have an activity, a transaction to enter into, and then we can give you money. And that has assisted management, at least in closing the loophole going forward. But the historic issues, they still need to resolve for us so that we could be happy that the loss was recovered and the MI has been closed. Uh, so the internal controls that are improved relate to that. Um, there were process of the DC process that management undertook. So we're happy on all the four MIs that those that needed to account did account. The investigations on all four, uh, one being the, the MIG1 and the three to CWP, 
we are aware that the DG has referred this to investigation, the hawks, the hawks. So that's a process, I suppose, if it delays, we will rely on this committee to ensure that you get feedback on the progress thereof and the contracts that were renegotiated at least to cover the, the organization uh, on the deficiencies that have been identified. I'll now check into the detail for each of the MIs, if you may allow me. On slide number nine, we were noting the date on which the MI was issued. The first MI, when the MI is a short for material regularity check. The first MI was for the grant payment. I'll just summarize it. The grant where I'm noting that it was made to an incorrect beneficiary. So that's just the description. There was a non-compliance because processes were not in place to ensure that correct people are paid, the approvals cover the risk and that, and those are the amounts that I noted. Uh, on the description, on the status here, Chair, we're saying appropriate actions being taken, implementation being monitored. What we mean there is that there were internal processes where the DC for, for the affected employees was taken. So, we, we acknowledge that that management did take action on that. Now, the second part of recovering the money involves the police because it appears that people did not want to refund the money or the money was distributed to a lot of people. So it requires really the law enforcement to either freeze people's accounts, take them to court and then recover the funds. So that's the part that we've been, we're saying we're monitoring it. Uh, we should hope that the process is going to be concluded soon if the Hawks conclude the, the, the investigation. But again, I think, unfortunately for management, we can only close this part once we get the confirmation of how the investigation has progressed and the recoveries of money. So that's what we mean on that status, Chair. The description is what I've spoken about. Money was incorrectly transferred. Uh, there are investigations uh, that are being undertaken by the Hawks. And I'm aware that, yes, the Hawks only, yes, that, that's investigating. Um, we, we're going to wait for the outcome of the investigation process. These were the disciplinary, disciplinary process was taken for those that were involved. Uh, there were two that were given warnings. There were two that were dismissed. I understand. Yes, and that's just the feedback. So, but overall, we're then saying on this MI, we're happy with what was in control for management to action, which was to discipline the involved employees, but on the part now of recovering the money that involves police, we'll have to wait for that one. So the closing of the MI will depend on that process. That's the first MI chair I can move on that one. I suppose we'll allow the questions at the end. On slide number 10, Chair, these are the three that's that the one that leads to what you call the CWP project, community works project. This was for payments of goods which were not received. Um, we noted as well when I was making examples in the in the opening there that the team had an appreciation that payments were made uh, when we did our own testing, which is testing if people have got ITs, people are alive and people have worked because that's how we tested the audit team. We then identify that there were payments that were made to people who were dead. Uh, the discussion with the client, the department, was supposed to confirm that when those people were still alive, they'd had worked um, and there were valid timesheets for them. So we could not confirm that. So our conclusion as a team is that these payments were made to people that had passed away. So. That's the background of the MI. At the very beginning of the process, okay, maybe on the status, sorry, Chair, we're saying here appropriate actions were taken, implement, implementation being monitored. What we mean by that is the, the department did implement take DC actions for with officials uh, that were involved. But now the process of closing the quantum that was identified is still ongoing. So until we have as a team that 
either management has recovered all the money they were supposed to recover for making invalid payment, then we cannot close that process on our end. Maybe I'll just jump then to the detailed description to say, when we identified, yes, we had quantified the amount to be 2.1 million. At that point, management uh, did have discussions with the implementing agents and there a few of them, I think, collectively acknowledged that to 649K. Um, the timing then of this last update was that it's when we just signed the financial year and last year. So we are aware that management has since done work on this uh, targeted to be completed end of March. So we'll really look in terms of what have been the developments of that. Um, but since then management is doing their own, improve the controls. Uh, as I noted earlier, they, they perform their own tests to see if people are alive the ones that are, are working in that. So that's what we're acknowledging here, that management has improved the processes. There was DC uh, actions that were taken to involved officials. Uh, the matter has been further re referred to further investigations to police. Um, yeah, we're going to follow up on the recovery process because some of the understanding between the department and the NPOs is that at the closeout process, when on the retention fees, basically, some of this money will be taken from there. So once that process is concluded, it's only then we can confirm that the department has recovered all the money and maybe we can consider closing the MI. I'll move to MI number 11, Chair. Sorry, right, that's slide number seven. This is, they relate to one another, this MI, is in that uh, this one relates to payments that are made in advance. I think I made an example to say, if you have an implementing agents, you can advance money if they can prove back to you that this is what they used for. Um, in this instance, payments were made in advance. The audit team could not find evidence of what the money was used for, whether there were goods that were purchased or assets that were purchased. So that's the genesis of the MI. And again, the status here, sorry, the, the status we're saying management did implement the, the correct the, the remedial action in terms of disciplining the, the relevant people, but the reconciliation process is, is still ongoing. And maybe you will see when we reflect at the very end that we've had some worries and we hope that management have arrested at least the, the corrective controls that managed to expedite because these were issued in 2019. If you're telling me that management is still sorting accounting records in order to identify if there was a loss and recovery. So that, that's on the on how long it's, it's, it's been taking for management to resolve these MIs. But in the description here, we're noting then the chair that the, the last estimated figure we had with management on these unreconciled advances was 18.6 million. Management had committed in the previous years that by March 22, this process would be closed. Uh, we audited them last year. It was still not closed. So in our view, we still have an MI that exists until management can reconcile that whole balance and prove that goods were purchased uh, for that amount. So that's where the process is at the way DC. It's referred to Hawks. I think what's outstanding here is for management to close the accounting process of having actual accounting records that prove whether that 18.6 is reconcilable or not. If it's reconcilable, we'll look into that and we'll close the case. If it's not reconcilable, that means the money needs to be recovered from some point. Then management closes that. That's then we can consider as the office to On the last uh, one, I think there were three on the CWP project. This relates to project management fees. This is interlinked to the rest because the, the implementing agents receive a percentage-based fee uh, and what you're saying here is that uh, in cases where you cannot confirm that the implementing agents bought goods, bought assets, or even supposed to receive money, you cannot have the correct basis to manage, to, to calculate any management fee. So this is linked on the other three. So um, until management is able to reconcile everything and then we can get to the percentage of management fee, we can then confirm that what the implementing agents got was correct. I think you could see here we don't have an amount because there's dependencies on the rest of the other MIs. And again, it's linked to 
the investigations that happened and the actions that were taken. On the last slide, um, Chair, sorry, before I hand over to you, we're saying here, as, as I noted, uh, the, this MIS we reported to management in 2019. At least let me make, make an example on the CWP ones. And those ones are very much dependent on management having a fixed asset register, having uh, goods and services, not having qualifications actually in, the, in, their, in, their, in their financial statements. I think that's the first step. And we, we have the view that it has taken them longer than to, to resolve that process, you know, to able to have reconciling reconcil reconciliations or valid reconciliations, which we believe this process is very much dependent on it first before they can actually say, we're either recovering money from somebody or, okay, the, 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 the agents had, had, had paid the money, there's, there's valid proof for, for the expenses, right? So that's what we're saying here that, yeah, we, we were very uncomfortable as the AG in terms of the progress that has been made since 2019. Uh, we've had a chat with management to say, hopefully, hopefully this year, uh, end, of the, end of March, the processes are closed. We hope that's the case because also in the past, management has made the such decisions, but when we come to audit, we still find issues. So, but this process for ourselves has, has long drawn. I think our, our recommendation to the committee is, is obviously to, 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 to continue following, making follow-ups and maybe touch on the unreasonable delays that have at least been featuring in these MIs. I think that's what you're saying, Chair. There, there's one, for instance, the MIG one, where we're saying there are investigations by police Maybe on that one, management can only do so much, which is limited to reporting it. Where maybe the committee can assist in getting the investigating bodies, provide feedback, and if there are delays in it, maybe you assist management. On those ones, we can understand. Uh, BUF, I think that was that on the presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I assume that uh, we will now uh, allow uh, 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 members to engage with the presentation. And uh, I will be guided by your hands. Uh, I see. Honorable Hadebe, Honorable Mkalipi, Honorable Spies. Can we follow that order, Honorable Hadebe? Thank you so much, um, Chairperson. And let me welcome the report, Chair. Um, and you will forgive me if I'm speaking out of 10. I see the heading on the presentation. It says it's a status update on material irregularities. But when you um, go to slide five, it is indicated that the, the MI process was implemented on the following auditees. There are three auditees um, reflected. That's DCOC, CRL Rights Commission, and the Municipal Demarcation Board. However, Chair, from slide eight to slide 12, the only focus um, it's, Am I identified from the Department of um, DCOC? Um, Chair, as this committee, we also play an oversight role um, in these other highlighted ODTs, including the provincial and local government. I'm not sure what was the brief given to um, AG, but I would like to get an understanding. Um, why are we only given the MI status update only on DCOC. If that was not part of the brief, I would so much love to propose, Chair, that in future, can we be given a consolidated update that will also include the MIs identified in all the other um, ODTs that have incurred MIs, particularly the local government sphere. The second aspect is that on slide six, 
um, where you have given us the next steps to be taken and the responsibilities um, attached to such. But when you go to slide 13, your, your last slide in terms of conclusion, you correctly um, highlight the issue of delays and the con. Sense. But in your recommendation, you are saying you are hoping they should have a confluence of processes and steps to be taken in an event where we are uncomfortable or dissatisfied with the time it takes. This is what is provided in terms of the law for us to invoke. Do you have such powers and provision to say here we are don't we are not seeing progress? There is no movement we are going to take this next step so that we do not have an open-ended process. Yes, it's taking too long, but at uh, some point in time, someone somewhere within this ecosystem of accountability has to stem uh, his or her authority and put the foot down to say, this cannot continue uh, 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 unabated. Someone has to conclude these processes. Do you have such, or you are relying on hopeful uh, to get these things done, even though there are clear indication that these delays are really unnecessary and not helping the process. Thank you so much, Chair. And congratulations are in order, newly appointed straight from the box, Minister. Welcome, wish you well in the future endeavors. Sifunu Chaisa Kumagena, ZEMIs in front of you. Uh, take us to the promised land. Thank you so much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Caleb. Hey, hey, Pan. Hi. Thanks very <laughs> much, Chair. Thanks very much for the presentation from the AG. You have and the right of, to remain silent, my friend. <laughs> some of the issues that uh, has been raised here by uh, Honorable Hatebe, I'm not going to repeat them, Chairperson, especially on slide five uh, of the presentation. As he correctly said, why there is no uh, information on Municipal Demarcation Board and CRL uh, Rights Commission. Uh, Chair, listening to the presentation, I think from the onset, we must also say that we at some point spoke about it as a committee, that we need to make a follow up, especially on SAPs and other people who are investigating in terms of issues that has been raised by this committee, which we seems that is deemed to be reported to, to, to police. So I think, Chair, we must also, as a committee, make that follow up uh, on ourselves, because really we need to know who have been investigated and how far with the hawks, whether it can be hawks or subs or uh, anyone who is investigating a crime that is committed in Kokta as a whole. So coming back to the presentation, uh, I think uh, I'm not sure which slides is that when we talk about four MIs, uh, we are also saying that uh, we are not happy in terms of the money that was recovered uh, out of 103 million, only for 4.7 million that has been covered. And I don't hear you saying what is the reason given by the department on this MIG uh, one. And um, the dates, you are clearly telling us the date of which we, uh, we are appreciating because we need also, when we engage with the department, we must be clear like that, that the AG said on the 24th of July, 2019, dating August 2019 and so forth and so forth. It's 2023, I agree with the AG. Some of these things are taking too slow. And I don't know uh, now, Chairperson, it's up to us as a committee as well to get answers from the, from, from the department itself. Because as the AG correctly was saying that they raise issues of financial mismanagement and they, 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 they said to the department uh, and management, please go and attend to these issues that we have picked up as, as AG. But they, they, there's no appetite from the management. So now I think this is not the first time that we have also asked in this platform, which Nina AG is pay your mandate. Uh, what else can you do except identifying the financial mismanagement and then talk to the department and also come here and say, no, we have raised our issues, but it seems as if the management does not have an appetite to, to deal with such issues. So in terms of the law, as we are empowered, what else can you do in order to assist? Because really, the factor of the matter is that 
we don't want um, a crime uh, that is committed is, is corruption, it's plain corruption. We can also put all sorts of name, names and put a good English to it. It's, it's corruption in a nutshell. So Chair, on the issue of CWP uh, as well, I just want to get a clarity. You are saying that um, the department uh, AG, the department also acknowledged the debt of 649 uh, while we have raised the issue of 2.1 million. And then can we clarify that one as well? And then on the progress of the, uh, you are saying at some part, you are very happy because there are officials who have been suspended for six months and others have been fired. But what is the details of that? How do they arrive to that six months? Because I can tell you now, Chairperson, if you are going to be very lenient, I know that those questions can't be answered fully by the AG, but, but, but by the department. But if you are going to be very lenient to say that uh, people have paid um, Ibogo here, because this CPWP is, is our nightmare in this, in this COCTA portfolio committee. Uh, we have been raising these issues here. People, if they want to loot, they come and take money from the CWP. And then we are still going to have that interaction ourselves with the department. But these NPOs, as I remember at some point, we also as AG correctly said, no, there is something that is being used there in the name of the NPOs. Even here, if the department is only saying that no, the NPOs uh, are also reluctant uh, to, 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 to bring back the money. And as a result, they have to go and open a case against uh, the, those NPOs. So when I get a, 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 a AG, do you have any suggestions in terms of the procurement? Uh, does the Auditor General have any proposals towards the reformation of the South African public sector procurement system? Because it's like you are fire extinguished in this committee or in South Africa as a whole. We wait until someone commit crime, commit corruption, and then we come and say, let's say for instance, AG saying that no, here, there's a financial mismanagement here. As HE, you are not happy. We, we must wait until that we are told, would know. In fact, uh, the CWP lacks systems. That's why they ended up paying dead people. So I think all of us, including you, AG, as you amended, I remember here, uh, starting from your presentation, you also reminded us what is your mandate in terms of the law. So is anything that can be done to prevent corruption? Because all of us here yeah, as members of the committee, I'm sure with the new uh, minister uh, also and all other leadership, they also want to see corruption free, especially in COCTA and local government. Those are the, uh, my uh, contribution, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Spice. Good morning, Chair. I just have a challenge with someone grinding here next door. Um, so I'm just getting them to stop for this machinery. And I can proceed. Yes, proceed. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you, Chair. I've been... Um, I've been partly covered by um, Honorable Hadebe and uh, Honorable Kalipi. And you do know that uh, the CWP is always the topic that I am always, always raising concerns about. So ideally, Jane, I need to establish that before I, I con continue. Ideally, in a, in, a, in a meeting like this, one would want to have the relevant people in the meeting. So having a discussion on material irregularities and, and the remedial action and the status on this, I want to establish whether the COCTA officials responsible for this are also in the meeting and whether they will be able to respond to some of the issues that was raised. Because if that's not the case, to me, it makes this exercise futile. Because some of the things that were said by the AG's office is all good and well. We need to understand who has received warnings, 
and what justifies a warning and not a dismissal. Um, we need to understand with the investigation that are currently underway, what are the time frames? Because we are now talking about matters that has been ongoing since 2019, 2019 that is three years, um, and whether it is close to completion or not. And then I remember in October when we were on oversight and the then minister uh, um, was in the meeting, we raised the issue. And I remember asking the question to COCTA um, and actually the AG's office, where the AG recommended certain remedial actions in terms of um, irregularities. And that COCTA then in effect said that they are sort of disputing those suggestions or recommendations. And I raised the concern as to how is it that COCTA are being guided and sort of you know, support offered in terms of remedial actions that need to be taken, yet they are almost in a, in a, they're in a dispute now with, with the AG, what the AG is suggesting and what they feel they should do. The point I'm trying to make is, it was the right thing to do by the AG's office. There was no, yes, we can, we cannot. That was, we do not have effective internal controls in terms of this department, which is the CWP within COCTA. Now, we are sitting with 300 million rand in fees paid to implementing agents in June already, last year. They are still saying that there cannot be an account for what has happened to the money or some of the monies. We cannot say that the monies will be recovered or yet the AG's office are saying to us they are doing everything possible within their means to try and see whether this monies can be recovered. I want to know what is going to happen when it is, it comes to the point that we're saying that money cannot be recovered. What is the next step in this? And again, how long is this going to take? What is the time frame on this? Um, so that, Chair, there's not a lot we can say about this. We all know the content of this. We are all deeply concerned and upset about this because it's money taken from the very people who, who need this and a program that I believe could actually work. So there's a bit more that needs to be said in this report back to us. And although we appreciate it, there are people who need to account and account in detail to us on the actions that are currently underway and taken. With not wanting to identify people and having names. It cannot be that when we come back in a few months time, we are still at the same point because the very authority or the the department that is responsible for this within COCTA is actually not pulling their weight. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Teza. No, thank you, Chair. My, my issues are covered in terms of by, by Honorable Mukalib uh, because the lexicon is the same uh, on preventative measures uh, in terms of preempting corruption. And the time frames that we have asked here, Chair, when the law enforcement agencies were part of the meeting to report on the on the corruption charges and implement implicated persons in terms of the embezzlements of funds. Uh, I'll tell you what, Chairperson, the corruption trends within within uh, government departments. Uh, uh, is that of procurement irregularities at 24%. Employment abuse of power at 90%, uh, with bribery at number one, the embezzlement of funds at 8%. Uh, I, I just want to, to, to get an understanding when are we getting, why are we getting delayed, uh, Chair, in terms of. Uh, the, because I, I should think that if we are getting this report 
and this concern from the AG that there is indeed uh, delays, uh, if you go to slide 13, uh, on the observations of the MI process. Really, Chair, we should be having the law enforcement agencies as part of these meetings to ascertain on, on the processes of particularly on the consequence management because we're not getting details uh, enough into it uh, in terms of uh, slide 11 uh, where it says it talks about those payments um, to implementation agencies without uh, evidence of goods and services having been received due to ineffective internal controls for for approving and processing payments. You can see that uh, our concerns with the CWP, as, as Honorable uh, Eleanor Spies has, has put it, uh, our concerns have not been addressed. Uh, 2019 is too long. Uh, and those delays uh, says that uh, there's, there's, there's someone who's sitting on these investigations. For instance, where are the section 106 reports <laughs> you know we are sitting at the same place uh, where even in terms of municipalities we're not getting all those things but uh, chair uh, uh, that is the the issue with the department and uh, uh, thank you very much for the report uh, we'll raise these issues with the relevant uh, uh, structures but the department uh, must 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 uh, speed up they are they are monitoring and 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 all those things in in the in terms of the the, the, the this embezzlement of funds uh, as soon as possible sure. thank you very much uh, honorable Butelez. thank you chairperson um considering that um only 4.7 million has been recovered from the 10.2, 10 point, 10 uh, sorry, 10.2 uh, million that was wrongfully paid to an NPO. Um, I wish to find out whether the department has since created a best practice model that is derived from the AG's recommendations on how to deal with matters relating to payments made for goods and services not received. Um, also, considering that prepayment for goods and uh, services that is yet to be received seems like a material irregularity waiting to happen, please advise on the measures that the department has put in place to, rec to recall funds paid to service providers once the deadline for the delivery of these goods has been missed. It is utterly unacceptable for payments to have been approved for deceased employees, as this indicates that the database with details of employees are severely outdated. Considering this, please advise on how the department has updated its internal controls to ensure that employee databases are regularly updated. Um, lastly, considering that uh, procurement and payment have become a breeding ground for material irregularities across the three spheres of government, really. So what are the plans that, have, that the department has put into place to curb this and to have these plans um, uh, sorry, and have these plans been adjusted in accordance with the context of each sphere? Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, Honorable Mbomza. Uh, I thought I saw your hand, uh, Honorable Mbomza. I no longer see it now. Um, we we are. I think we'll allow him uh, uh, maybe later. We uh, uh, we 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 might be tempted to be 
asking from the uh, AG's uh, uh, office as well as the department uh, because we see the minister here. But I think the presentation was more by the AG to the committee. And uh, so obviously it's them who are going to respond to some of the uh, questions for clarity, whatever questions that have been raised. I think we would have to schedule a meeting with the department uh, to make sure that we are able to deal with the issues uh, they come prepared for such uh, responses. Uh, uh, but uh, it doesn't uh, preclude. I think we'll allow the minister at the end. Can we allow uh, uh, the leader of uh, the business unit, uh, AG's office? Uh, yes, uh, we can allow that. Thank you. Yes, over to you. All right, thank you so much, Honorable Chair, and also Honorable Members for your, for your questions. Um, I will try to, 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 to respond to many of them, and then I'll also uh, invite my colleagues on the call to, to augment what I probably might have left in terms of responding to, to the questions. Um, if I may start with the Honorable Hadebe, uh, you raised the point uh, pertaining to the slide five uh, that we've highlighted that the material irregularities um, that we've implemented in both from the department as well as from the MDP and all and else CLS. I can confirm that when we're doing the audit of MDB as well as CLS, uh, during that process, we have not identified the material irregularities. Hence, there was, um, there was no material irregularities irregularities pertaining to those two entities. However, as we continue with our audit for the 2022-2023, we'll still continue to identify those material if there are any uh, that we have missed or that, that are gonna be, uh, that, that have been uh, also issued or uh, identified during the process of 2022-2023 audit. It is an annual process that we do for the material irregularities. In terms of the briefing of why it's focusing on the department, um, I think that is that was the briefing that we got that we need to uh, provide the committee with a status update on the MIs that were raised pertaining to the department. However, I can confirm that we are the East Provincial Business Unit leaders. There are uh, um, material irregularities that were issued in that regard, and also from the local government sphere. As we all know that we will be tabling as well our MFMA 2021-2022 uh, general report uh, and by end of May by the Auditor General. And we will also include some of the material irregularities that have been issued during the local government uh, audit process. That is also still coming. And we'll be happy to brief the committee, both the provincial as well as the local government material irregularities. And then the second part was the highlighting of the how, when do we invoke our powers as the Auditor General when it comes to the certificate of debt, um, as there were delays in the process of, of, the, of the investigations that are currently undertaking. As, as I can respond to that, that the certificate of debt is actually the last resort in terms of the material irregularity process. We, it is issued only when the accounting officer or the authority, there is evidence that there's actions, the actions taken by them to address or prevent or recover the financial loss are not appropriate. So as we indicated earlier, the accounting officer did take uh, appropriate action to address the material irregularities and, and some still are still uh, being investigated by the law enforcement agents. So if we do want to, give um, the law enforcement agencies to, to conclude uh, those investigations and see what is coming out of those investigations so that we ensure that recommendations that come there 
are being implemented by the accounting officer. So we, we, are, we are just allowing the process to be completed so that we can be able to, 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 to act accordingly as the Auditor General. And in terms of Honorable Mkalipi as well, you, you ask what, what kind of, for the MIG, which is a municipal infrastructure grant, we have only uh, recovered 4.7 million and the, the 98 million is still not recovered. Uh, I think that is, a, that is why the accounting officer, the DG, decided to further, um, um, to refer the matter to the investigations officer one being the hawks and also to also the specialized commercial um, commercial uh, unit uh, and also and also implement the, the civil case that is currently being uh, handled by the state attorneys so that they can recover the 98 million uh, that has been incorrectly paid to to this service provider so that is also part of the process there's hawks process there's also as well as the specialized commercial a crime unit that is also looking at this case to ensure the recovery of the of the 98 million. And, and then in terms of the CWC program, uh, for the payments that have been made to, to, to the deceased, we the estimated loss is 2.1 million, of which the department currently they have acknowledgement of debt of the 649,000 that the NPOs are, will, are, are willing to pay back to the department. And that process is still underway. Uh, what we what is satisfying is that there is acknowledgement of debt. Or although the remainder of that amount, the NPOs are taking the department uh, to court because they 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 are denying or uh, they are disputing uh, that that balance. So we'll also uh, reflect on that maybe in the next and on also monitor the progress in that regard. And also we ensure that the six hundred and forty nine that has been signed this where the, the acknowledgement of debt has been signed will ensure that money is paid during our audit process for the 2022-2023 audit. And uh, I think uh, Honorable Tess as well again Honorable Mkalipi, you are uh, you 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 asked us about what are we doing as Auditor General uh, in terms of assisting in terms of the reformation of the public procurement policies and also the preventative measures to ensure these things don't we prevent them before they happen. As the Auditor General, I think under the Auditor General um, Kimi Makwet, the late Kimi Makwet, there was a preventive, there is a preventative control guidelines that we have issued together with the National Treasury on to assist the accounting of authorities, the accounting officers, and also the oversight structures on some of the key preventative controls that should be in place in order to prevent any corruption or uh, or wrongdoing uh, in the public sector space. So that guidelines, those guidelines are available and are also in public. And we'll, we will be happy to provide as well to this committee, those preventative guidelines uh, that we also have, have, have formulated and developed with the National Treasury to ensure that we also, um, uh, we, we contribute to, 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 the, to, the, to, the, to the public sector in terms of the preventative measures. And then in terms of, um, I think, Honorable Spisi, I think it was more on whether the Kota officials are in the meeting. And, um, and, and, uh, and also we wanted to understand why some of the officials received just the warning and there was no suspension. Um, I think the, the department is around, but the ones that received the warnings were the employees, the officials that are were in level five, which is very uh, lower, le lower level in the, in, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the chain. However, the ones that were in the senior management level, I think those ones were, were, were suspended. Um, but uh, happy for the department or the honorable minister to, 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 to get through that one. And the, also the timeframes on, on the investigations, uh, uh, I think management will be able to, to assist with the timeframes uh, in terms of the HOCS uh, programs. And then uh, I will just hand over to my colleagues um, to, to augment uh, some of my responses if there's anything that I've missed, and uh, also uh, and, and also in terms of honorable Butelezi, I think you 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 ask what are the departmental controls that are currently in place as part of a process as auditor general. We have, we normally provide input on the audit action plans to address uh, any control deficiencies that we have identified during the audit process, 
And we have done the same in this one as well. It's not also, and also the input, it's also the output to ensure that the action plans, we monitor them, ensure that they are addressing uh, some of the control deficiencies identified, of which when during the presentation, Dumiseni did highlight that some of our of the controls have already been put in place by the department, specifically on the community works program to ensure that any disbursements or advancements to the implementing agents are done are not only done without the supporting document, whether in the form of an invoice or a quotation, so that some of the areas that the department are currently um, um, putting in place to ensure there's non-recurrence uh, in this area. But I will just hand over to, to Nicholas and also to Dumiseni to, to supplement some of my responses if there's anything that I've, I have I've, I've missed. Uh, with your permission, Honorable Chair. Thank you. Yes. No, th thank you. Thank you so much, Chairperson, Chairperson, and honorable members for the questions. And thanks, and Nopakama for the responses to the questions. Just, just one that was raised by Honorable um, Karipin, uh, relating to the uh, to the financial recovery of the payments that was made to the deceased, where we indicated that seven hundred forty-nine thousand has been acknowledged. Whereas we we with 2.1 million was initially raised, yeah, the, the honourable uh, uh, this this is still in progress in, in progress. Uh, what we have raised with management was more to say we are estimating this to be the loss. The loss could be more if you go a step further and do the investigation and also even engage with the NPOs. They have since engaged with the NP with the NPOs. Uh, 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 that the ones that the ones that have actually uh, uh, have uh, acknowledged the debt of seven hundred forty-nine thousand, the other ones that are still contesting uh, that indeed they actually uh, owing the department. The department needs to pursue those and ultimately uh, uh, find a, a solution to that. To, to that, I mean that is still in progress, not yet uh, uh, reaching the the, the the conclusion. And I think overall, I agree uh, with the members that about the delay. That uh, if you to look into what has been recovered to date and what has been lost. It's, 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 uh, what has been lost is quite long. And, uh, and, and I think our recommendation that uh, we need to follow, follow up with the, the law, law enforcement agencies to speed up the process, especially where like, there is a clear evidence that the money has been unduly paid or, or uh, there are some people that have unduly paid, then they, 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 they need to speed up the process so ultimately that money can be returned to, 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 the, to the fiscals. Then uh, in terms of the internal controls that we do can cover, uh, can further clarify, we have seen the improved internal controls in the area of, uh, of, of uh, um, payment of goods and uh, services where before the, that, the, the, the payment could be made, they are, might, might do some checks in terms of establishing whether indeed like, there's evidence to support that the goods have uh, been received. Whereas before that control was, was, was not absent. Madam Jimson can just uh, add uh, more in terms of the, uh, uh, the question that was raised by other people. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Can I go forward, sir? Yes, yes. No, no thank you, Chair. You know, I, I'll just touch on the on the on the improvements, Chair. I think if you look at the context of these MIs, we we raised them at a point where the department was not alert to the deficiencies that existed within the CWP program, you know, just in summary. And as communicated in the findings, there, there were severe deficiencies or breakdown in internal controls. Uh, but, but, but since then, as I noted, I think on the payment side, they, they have um, put down some controls. Uh, I'm aware that the, the bank accounts, for instance, Treasury does keep the bank account. So the confirmations actually even come from Treasury to ensure that periodically, the, the bank accounts that are kept for the municipalities are checked against the, the approved accounts. Because in any case, municipalities, when they open an account, they need to notify or get an approval from Treasury. That's that. On the goods and services part, I think what we noted as a team, the contracts that were ended to at the very beginning, 
yeah, it, it didn't look like people actually had an appreciation that the department has recourse, you know, they, they need to keep documents and that, because the improvements actually that came after our findings, they, we then agreed with management, as I know, to that on the prepayments, they, they, they now can at least um, get documents before they release funds on the salaries. Uh, and again, it's an important point, you say, as an organization, you need to have an updated um, register of people, like the employee list and that. I, I, I'm not sure how the NPOs are operating, but it doesn't look like they always get that right. But the management is, the organization, um, the cocktail money is to do their own test as well. So th there's quite an improvement because as you note, the, the irregularities that we identified, they have not sort of accumulated since the first day, since when we reported them, meaning that management has remedied somehow. I think the struggle that management has, at least in solving them, is to go back during that period when accounting records were not being maintained properly and then say, yeah, we're able to reconcile. I think that's the biggest problem. But going forward, we're quite happy with, with the controls they've since implemented. I think that's that, Nick, echoing what everybody has been saying from our team. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh... I assume, uh, honorable members, uh, if there are no follow-ups, we will be coming closer to, uh, as earlier indicated, the uh, people invited here was the Office of the Auditor General to make a presentation. The intention was to alert the committee to the MIs as already done. And uh, uh, obviously would uh, then uh, adopt an approach to say, how does this uh, get uh, uh, attended to, as indicated in the recommendations, what the committee is supposed to do. But because we have got a minister who cannot be uh, assumed to be invisible when she is here and new from the box, uh, minister, we not putting you on the spot. It's just making comments. And I think there's a line that has been drawn as well in terms of responsibility. Uh, there is responsibility for the executive to follow up on this and then we'll obviously follow up as a committee. Oh, but I can see Honorable Mbumza uh, again, maybe before I allow you, Minister. Honorable Mbumza. Uh, thank you, Chairperson and uh, colleagues and uh, good morning. Mm -hmm. Am I what a preacher person? Yes, you are. Yeah, I can see that uh, you are now rounding up. Yes, um, apparently, I apparently, I had my hand earlier on, but unfortunately, I think at the moment you were recognizing me already, not hurting it actually struck. So I was uh, kicked out. Uh, I, 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 I think the uh, uh, time for raising uh, questions now is past. Uh, but uh, before you actually round up, I just raised the hand and I wanted to say uh, uh, to Honor Mkalipi, the Ekalo Lestosa, Liti, Eli, Betege, Minister, I'm just getting in to uh, congratulate you uh, to this position you have. Uh, been appointed into and accepted. 
so that uh, you come to our cleaning questions. So we welcome you, Honorable Minister. Thanks, Chair. Well, thank you, Honorable Boomsa. Uh, Thanks, Chair. Chairperson. Oh, Honorable um, Kali. And the Vanga Gashe, Uti Uti Numpa Bumpumsa, Nesina Muva, Urifia Buminister Mumcha. Yes. Oh, okay. She is very, she is appreciated because she is the uh, Isinamva. Well, I'm not sure, but that's the intention is to invite the minister. But I can see some more hands now. Uh, I see Honorable Taban Chava. Hi. Thank you, Chairperson. Good morning to all all of you colleagues and good morning to the new minister. I just want to congratulate our, our new minister, a, a, a young brat. Young brat, you are welcome. We love you so much, please. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure, Honorable Buteles, if it is a, a legacy hand or is it something new? Oh, sorry, it's an old hand, Chair. Sorry. Okay. Then, Minister, uh, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair, and I uh, appreciate uh, warm messages uh, from uh, Honorable Members of welcome, and I uh, uh, appreciate the task at hand. Uh, also appreciate the commitment that the Portfolio Committee has always had and will continue to have in trying to resolve local government um, issues and improve uh, services to our people, which is the ultimate intention of the developmental goal of government. Honorable Chair, I wouldn't have wanted to um, comment, uh, and I appreciate the courtesy given, but I had requested even before you offered the courtesy that I request the DG to touch on some of the issues, but emphasizing the point which I think you raised in your remarks that uh, ourselves uh, as the department and the portfolio committee still have a pending engagement, not only on AG matters, but on quite a few numbers that the portfolio had requested, CWP being one of them. And if you note quite all the uh, MIs that we have been discussing, they are mainly uh, uh, emanating all of them actually from our CWP program in its old form and in the new form. So I think we may want a uh, uh, chair with your permission, uh, possibly our officers to facilitate that discussion with the office of the DG as soon as possible so that we can also uh, uh, put on the table what our thoughts and what our a process flow that we will follow, of course, with the guidance of the committee, but also holding us accountable where we should be uh, reporting back. But I appreciate the dire state in which you are at in what the uh, presentation has been able to curtail and worryingly so the time span between 2019 in the main to 2023 today. Uh, it's quite a long haul of uh, the responsibility of government to get back what should be paid back to government, but also with the assistance of uh, the external stakeholders uh, like Hawks, SAPS. And Honorable Mkalipi is correct. We had agreed as a committee quite some time last year that maybe we may have to pen down that meeting. And I think that's one of the carrier ways that I take in ensuring that we facilitate immediately that sitting together with the portfolio committee and uh, the external and uh, stakeholders like uh, law enforcement agencies where these cases are reported to have been opened in September, 2021. I think in 2023, it will be fair for the portfolio to request an update uh, with our law enforcement agencies. Chair, that uh, uh, was brief for me and I offer my commitment to the team to always work hard. We now have no excuses. Uh, 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 one of our deputies is also a seasoned local government uh, 
a practitioner and specialist. Uh, uh, the Deputy Minister of Traditional Affairs also is a seasoned traditional member of the House. He has been he is by birth also in uh, 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 So we hope that we should be able to give tangible programs, actions that the Portfolio Committee could be able to follow through, all in the best interest of the people and citizens of South Africa. I thank you very much, Honorable Members and hope to work you with you very well. Thank you. Chair, with that being said, I will request that the DG can just highlight on some of the key few things and uh, back to your hands for your capable direction. Thank you. Okay, DG. Uh, good morning, uh, Honourable Chairperson, and to all the Honourable Members, and I also greet our Minister, um, and I also greet all the colleagues that are here present today. Uh, perhaps maybe just to start by appreciating the presentation uh, by the uh, AEG, uh, and also appreciating the progress, you know, as also reported uh, by the AEG. Um, mine is not to say uh, too much, save for the fact that I wanted to just emphasize that um, what has been presented is, is historical and relates specifically to the old CWP uh, contract, which was also then uh, deemed to be an irregular contract uh, through a court case uh, that was held in the Sariti matter. So if you look at uh, all the work that has been undertaken by the department um, in relation here too. Uh, we would also, uh, we are, were also at a point where we really uh, believed that most of the MIs um, actually should have been closed uh, by now. Uh, perhaps maybe uh, just to mention uh, where uh, we need to round up or wrap up was also based on the fact that we had to await a closeout of uh, the, the, the actual contract. We had to then ensure that we um, finalize our reconciliations based on this closure and also making sure that we are clear about what the estimated losses are. Uh, and of course, we've had agreement with the, the AG that uh, these will be then finalized during this financial year. And we have a deadline as at uh, the 31st um, of March for this year. Uh, I think that the AG has also then responded uh, to, to all the issues that have been raised, whether they relate uh, to the uh, debt that has been acknowledged by the NPOs and the fact that we are sitting in court uh, where there's contestation. Uh, and also, just with regards to the law enforcement agencies, for us, this is also our point of frustration. So we will welcome um, additional engagement uh, with the uh, law enforcement agencies uh, that we have been presented our matters to uh, some time back, both the Hawks and the Special Commercial Crimes Unit. Um, because we have not necessarily received timelines on the investigations that, that are being undertaken. Um, so perhaps, Chair, I should um, maybe leave it at that uh, and perhaps also just mention that um, we will make absolutely certain that we provide all the details um, as requested. Uh, by the uh, honorable members in the meeting that has already been scheduled and the meeting is scheduled for the 24th of March. Uh, and as such, we will also then bring the details around the officials that were implicated and uh, what actions have been taken against those officials, et cetera, within that session. So thank you very much, Chairperson. I would like to leave it at that for now. Otherwise, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, the minister did indicate that uh, we had uh, an arranged engagement earlier 
And uh, now the date is uh, confirmed or indicated as the 24th. And I think the presentation that we have gone through and the questions may as well inform the department as to how to prepare for the meeting of the 24th. But I'm sure there will be a follow-up in terms of uh, formal communication to say what would be the expectation. And uh, I think as well, we have noted the issue of the law enforcement agencies. Uh, I'm sure our team will also take note of that and see how do we follow up. Otherwise, thank you very much, Minister. Thank you very much, uh, honorable members and the team from the AG. Uh, at least this uh, engagement is, is making us more focused in terms of what we should expect. And I'm sure the uh, request from members to say, if it says uh, DCOG, national we also want to know what is happening at the level of provinces and local government by those few words let me thank everybody the meeting is adjourned <laughs>